Welcome to a world where DIY and firepower collide. This is Extreme DIY Gunsmithing, the show where we craft the extraordinary out of the ordinary. Today, we're turning this tired AR upper into a rifle that's a masterpiece of ingenuity and flexibility. Get ready for an AR build like you've never seen before. Our mission is to rebuild this AR upper into an AR-15 that's extreme. Now when I mean extreme, I mean extreme in extreme flexibility. Now safety's first. I'm gonna be working with springs and machinery and to protect my eyes, I'm gonna be using the gear fires from my friends over at Belay. This build that we're doing is legal where I'm at, which is a roundabout way of saying, you need to check the logs. Now the route that most people go is to take these hand guards off and use a free float tube, which is great. I love free float tubes. I got a lot of them on my rifles, but that's not extreme enough for this build. We're gonna be using an RS-12 from our friends over at Bear City Arms. This gives us the ability to change a barrel in the field in under a minute, which means that if I'm shooting 223 and I wanna to go to 300 blackout, one minute later, I'm back up and running. Having the right tools for this project is crucial. I'm gonna use the Master Gun Vise and the Armorer's Master Kit Pro. Combination of these two kits are gonna give me about every tool that I'm gonna need for this AR. Our first step is to strip down this AR, so that way we have a base that we can build off of. Now normally, this is where the disassembly process would stop, but since we're gonna do a Cerakote job, this dust cover and forward assist have gotta go. In extreme DIY gunsmithing, the standard is just not good enough. For a lower, we're gonna pull out the 5D tactical jig and mill our own out. Now because of YouTube policies, I can't show you this next section. So you're just gonna to have to go to my webpage to see the full video. Now that this lower is milled out and cleaned up, it's pretty plain, so it's time to do some customization work. And then we'll take everything out, sandblast it, and get it coated. Now these lowers are really plain. So I'm gonna put a design on one side and compliance information on the other using electro etching. Now electro etching is not as good as laser, but it's really good for the DIYer because you can get a local print shop to cut the stencil for you and you probably have a battery charger for a vehicle. All you need is a bolt, a cotton swab, a zip tie, some water, and some salt, and you got everything you need to do electro etching. Now you're not gonna get the fine lines that you get with a laser, but as I said, this is a DIYer's dream and electro etching has been around for decades. Now the trick to electro etching is dabbing and not swabbing. You wanna make sure you pick this thing up and put it down straight. That way you don't pull the template off of your receiver. Now on the other side, we're gonna put our compliance markings like our name, serial number and model number. That means we're gonna to have to weed out all the writing so that way we can do our electro etching. And like the other side, we're just gonna keep on dabbing until we get to a depth that we're happy with. I did two lowers, I did a plus and a negative, and each has their own advantage. You're just gonna to have to decide which one is for you. Now the plus gives you something like an old Roman coin. Now the negative gives you something more like your traditional etching. Now I'm out in the spray booth and we're getting ready to shoot some Cerakote. I've already done all the prep work, the sandblasting, the acetone and all that stuff. And now let's get some color laid down on these. So the receiver, I'm gonna run tungsten. Now for the barrels, I'm gonna run Cold War Gray. I'm also gonna run that on the buffer tube. And for the flash hider and any of the accents, we're gonna be running Shimmer Aluminum. It's gonna give us a really nice pop on the colors. Let's get to work. So I'm in from doing Cerakote, and what I have here on the bench is my lower. Now what I'm gonna do is build this lower up. Now if you don't know how to build a lower up, I have a class over at Freedom Crew University that will walk you through all of this, and it's not very expensive. Definitely go check it out. Now I'm gonna be working with a trigger from Bowden Tactical. And this is one of these all-in-one triggers, and it's kind of about a three and a half to four pound pull with a straight trigger. I really love these things, and I wanna build off of this just because I want a really nice trigger pull. Now, because we're gonna use that trigger, I don't need a full lower parts kit. 
Now this has everything except for the hammer, the trigger, a pistol grip, but I also have pistol grip laying around and I'm gonna use one of my ergos and also a trigger guard. So between that kit from Rise Armament, my pistol grip, and also on the trigger guard, I've got a whole lower parts kit. Now because of YouTube policies, I can't show you this next section. So you're just gonna have to go to my webpage to see the full video. So since we're going for maximum flexibility, why not make it a side folder? I bought this from Sylvan Arms a few years ago and it was a blend. I really didn't care. I think it'll be perfect for this project. Now because of YouTube policies, I can't show you this next section. So you're just gonna have to go to my webpage to see the full video. You might be wondering how we're gonna make the magic happen with making this flexible where we can change calibers. Now this is the old A2 barrel. I got it surcoated. I'm gonna put the gas block and gas tube on it. And then I'm going to install this system from Bear City Arms. What's gonna happen is this barrel will slide right in. These latches close and now this barrel is retained. Now I have a whole video on how to install the Bear City Arms system. Make sure you go check that out. Now with Bear City Arms, we don't install our barrel into our AR upper like we traditionally do. Instead, we install our gas tube and gas block onto our barrel and then attach our muzzle device. From there, we're ready to roll. So that's how modern ingenuity gives us the ultimate in flexibility. That's a wrap for this extreme build. If you like this transformation, make sure you follow, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned for more projects. See you next time. Today, we're turning this tired looking AR. Our mission is to convert this AR upper. Our mission is to convert this AR upper. That's extreme. And when I mean extreme, it means it. Not that this lower is milled out and cleaned up. It so now we got this. So now we got this lower milled out. And it's time to go. And not worry about the colors that we can't because, well, so I'm out in the so I'm out in the spray booth and we're getting ready to do Cerakote. Now this is gonna be a really